Hello everybody, Manithrall here and welcome to the weekly update video for OSRS. Now this week we see poll 78 changes. Uh, so first up, let's get into the change log itself. Maybe a little bit more description later for some other stuff. Uh, there's no hot fixes at the very start of the page, but there is some that have been released throughout the week. Uh, but up first we have poll 78. So uh, they enabled spell icon resizing when filtering. Uh, when filters are enabled in the magic tab. So now you can use a wider variety of seed to fill birdhouses as well on Fossil Island. Crafted runes can now be added directly to your rune pouch. Uh, magic signatures increase yield effect uh, now works from the inventory. Additionally, magic signatures increase yield effect now applies to bushes and limpert flowers as well. Uh, the quantity of nightshade received when harvesting has been increased and made it untradeable, stackable version. Uh, other changes, uh, such as tweak some poison behaviors uh, to restore prior behavior to, for Treus Death, uh, Corporal Beast Dark Core, and Chickens. <laughs> Seems kind of odd there, I know. Uh, fix a bug where reapplying Venom would reset the damage dealt back down to 6. Fix a bug where the Moosepa Phantom Moosepa's freeze duration reduction was applying twice. Uh, release a high scores table for the skillers and one defense peers. Rupert and Monus Burrowager uh, will now sell more than one replacement for the Dwarven Helmet and the Nitsat Helmet, respectively. Additionally, both can be reobtained from Purdue. Corrected grammar in the tombs of the Sun Moon Tem Temple. Remove the debug text from the gnome cookery. Fix some floor tiles in the key master's uh, cave that were blocking movement. When sacrificing bones to an altar in the player owned house, the game now consumes them from start, uh, starting from the top of your top left of your inventory. Wow, that was a tongue twister. <clears throat> the world map has been updated to help those who struggle to remember the difference between the Jaltebas, Jalrich, and Jalisrophos, and Jalsavara. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, activity high scores, basically the different pyramids, um, from what I remember. <laughs> activity high scores that previously had a minimum KC of 50 have been expanded. Uh, the new minimum is 45. Hotfixes released over the past week include there was a bug where the poison and or venom was being cleared on Chinchapas, causing them to instantly die on respawn. Uh, fix a bug where reverting crystal weaponry wouldn't return the relevant seed. And fix a bug where players who you killed, uh, who killed you, rather, and last man standing would receive a PvP kill credit if you died to a PBM death to one of the reworked wilderness bosses. Uh, fix a bug where the delay at the start of the round of the nightmare zone was greatly reduced. Fix a bug where some bosses weren't selectable uh, when customizing the rumble of the nightmare zone. Prevent the players from being able to sell back their colossal blade to the giant's foundry since they're reobtainable from Purdue. Now, as far as the spell resizing goes, as you can see here, this is definitely an increase, whereas you can normally get probably six icons across the board. And as you can see here, now they are greatly increased. But maybe it's some people who have a little bit of a harder time seeing than others, uh, which is absolutely fantastic for some people. For some people, just leave it as it is. Uh, that is one of the only brutal main changes other than the stuff we have already listed so what's next well we have the coming up old school's 10th birthday event so that's coming up uh we got to make sure that's going off and so additionally if you missed yesterday's blog which is on the main web page uh on desert treasure 2 the fallen empire uh they do have stuff uh up right now as we speak uh, for the community designed weapon and so make sure to share it out of the uh, forward slash r forward slash 2007 scape subreddit oh and twitter using the hashtag hashtag uh dt2 community design so go forth and check that out 
Uh, in the meantime, mark your calendars for Saturday, February 18th, when the third season of Soup's Gilmore Games comes to conclusion for the finale. So don't miss that, which is the Soup's YouTube channel. So do check that out. And then we have a third Crack the Clue 3. So here we go. Empty lines where diagonals are left out. You will have to find them in the correct route. A step in each direction will lead to a breakthrough. It will perfectly fit in a grid familiar to you. What remains after that is easy to guess, but no crate will be needed to progress. Information seems to be missing appears, guessing it would take half a million years. However, the numbers can be solved on their own, and it would help wouldn't help much if the rest was shown. That being said, you may still get involved, but you won't finish until the questions are resolved. So do check, see if you can figure it out. I don't know if there's going to be more clues or not. Uh, PvP World Rota is moving to period B, which is 560 UK PvP, 579 US High Risk PvP, 561 UK Free to Play PvP, 580 US LMS Competitive. Uh, the World 390 AUS LMS Competitive is deactivated with this Rota, and PvP Arena is moving to the pure loadout for the ranked duels and tournaments this week. So for this week, that is all we can see for the OSRS variant. Uh, but do stay tuned. We do have some awesome stuff coming in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, later guys.